Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of Power Core Productions and Podcastings. And in today's video, we are going to be continuing Naruto Tale of Two Sages. What if Naruto was Luis's familiar? Part 13. As always, if you're new to the channel or if you're a regular and you like what we have to offer, then please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share, and hit that bell for post notifications so you can stay up to date on everything that is Power Core Productions and Podcastings that has to come out now and in the future. As we go into part 13, we'll be effectively completing all seasons of Familiar of Zero. Meaning that once we go into our final stages of the story, we'll be wrapping up the end of the Naruto Shippuden part of our saga as well. I do want to take the time to say thank you to everyone who has been in support of this story from its very beginning, as it was something that was new for me to delve into. Familiar of Zero is one of those animes that don't really get covered in what ifs all that much, and me being the type of storyteller, I want to try to do the type of animes or the type of stories that you might not think to do. Sure, they might not be all that popular, but I want to try to go for a unique flavor. While you will see some stories that have been done on other channels before, I want to try to find unique ones that stand out. And for me, this is one of the original stories that I have been crafting for up until now, and we are now entering into its final stages. But how will things end as the Familiar of Zero world story draws to a close, and we enter into the final stages of Naruto's journey as the fourth great ninja war looms on the horizon? For all this and more, stay tuned as we now continue Naruto Tale of Two Sages. What if Naruto was Luis's familiar? Part 13. As always, Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Naruto was in silence. To hear the news of what was happening. To learn that the fourth great ninja war was on the horizon. And that while all this was happening, he was still stuck in this world. For Naruto, he knew he had to get back as soon as possible. But for now, until they figure out a way, the best thing he could do was stay on guard. He would send Gamakichi back, telling him that he would summon him soon and to give any information that he could in the meantime. And he would relay any news he had on his end as well. As the frog left, Luis would arrive not too long after. She could see the look on Naruto's face and knew that something was bothering him. Naruto would explain the situation to her and this only left Luis feeling more and more guilty. Here Naruto was in their world trying his best to help them when honestly he was the one that needed help as well. His world was about to go into a war in which it had never seen and there was no telling what could take place soon after. She told Naruto that if there was any way that she could get him back sooner, then they'd have to find it. And while Naruto was eager and he accepted the offer, he still promised he was going to help with this world. After all, the day of the Great Calamity was soon approaching, meaning that they were going to need all the help that they could get, and Naruto vowed to lend them his strength. Luis was grateful for Naruto, and... While she was hopeful that he could find his way back home, there was a part of her that still wanted him to stay. In the meantime, everyone would be gathered in the country of Galia, as Talbatha was preparing for a coronation to take the throne after replacing her uncle, King Joseph. As Talbatha was preparing, she would find herself having a conversation with Naruto briefly before the ceremony. As Naruto was helping with last minute security touch up, Talitha would speak to Naruto, telling him that she was grateful. In truth, she had expected to die, which was going to be the outcome. Her uncle, as evil as he was, had no intentions on honoring his end of the deal, even if she had managed to help in the capture of Naruto and Luis. 
After he had gotten what he wanted, she was more than likely going to be executed along with her mother, who had been driven mad following the assassination of her father long ago. But it was thanks to Naruto that she had this second chance. Although the fact that she had almost betrayed her friends to do so, she felt a bit unworthy of all of this honor, of all of this adulation. Who was she? No one special or significant. However, Naruto assured her that it wasn't like that. Sure, she made a mistake, but in the end, not giving up on a friend was not something that Naruto looked down upon, but rather it was something that he was all too familiar with. As he rested his hand on her shoulder, he would assure her that no matter what, if she ever needed help, he was going to come running because they were friends, and if there was anything that he could do, he'd gladly do it. For Naruto, he was really just trying to be nice. However, for Talbata, she saw things much more differently. Looking into Naruto's eyes, she found them to be a pleasant blue. A blue that reminded her of the waves of the sea, or of the freezing of water into ice. Something that was clear and bright, all in one. Unknown to Naruto, his number of fans were growing day by day. And not too long after, the ceremony would conclude with Tabata being made the Queen of Gallia. Of course, following this meeting, there would be another urgent council that would have to be held in Romelia, as the Pope, along with his right-hand man and servant, who was his familiar in Julio the Knight, would speak to Naruto, Tefania, and Luis, as the four of them were void mage magic users, they were all going to have to band together, as the day of the calamity was soon approaching, a day in which the sky would be filled with darkness. When that time came, it would be their warning. They would have to get the people to safety. Armies from the various countries were being gathered together, from Romelia to Gallia to Albion, even from Tristan. Princess Henrietta explained that all their forces were going to join together. Naruto asked what was this calamity, and the Pope would explain that the ancient dragon, the one of darkness, would have re-emerged from its slumber, and a dragon horde would follow not too far behind. You could say it was the war of dragons, evil dragons that had long since been sealed away, being spearheaded by the ancient dragon of calamity. He is the one who would bring the world and plunge it into ruin, and it would only be through their power that they would be able to fend it off. Naruto was all too ready to help, knowing that anything he could do to fight off this evil would be of much benefit. However, the Pope would also explain that there was something else that he needed to reveal. Within the catacombs, there would be a place a secret hall in which ancient writing had long since been left behind. Looking inside of it, these were the final scrolls, books, and memoirs of those who were able to use void magic. Here they might be able to find what they were looking for. Naruto and Luis would search through the catacomb, looking for whatever sort of spell that they could use. And then finally they found one. The doorway between worlds. A spell that, when used correctly, could take someone to another world entirely. This was it, what they had been looking for. Naruto and Luis looked at each other nervously. This was the way that Naruto could get back home, but what were they going to do? Luis looked to Naruto and instantly yelled that now was the time. Now was the time for him to go back. His world needed him now more than ever. However, Naruto... He declined. What? Why are you declining? This is your chance. We have been looking for this for so long. Naruto, now is not the time to be stubborn. You don't know what could happen. You could die in this world. I know. I get that, Luis. And don't get me wrong, I want to go back, but still... You guys need my help. Naruto will be fine, I promise. 
Luis, I'm not leaving you. But why? Why bother staying now? You were going to leave at some point anyway. Luis, what's the concern? There's no concern. It's just, why are we delaying the inevitable? I mean, there's no point in us trying to pretend like we didn't know this day was coming. I just didn't think it'd be like this. I'm sure me and Tefania can figure out a way. I'm sure that if we work on it right now, we'll have it ready for you in no- Before she could continue, Naruto pulled her close and then quickly gave her a kiss. Of course, Louise had no idea this was coming. It was completely unexpected. And for those in the room, they were also caught off guard by this, some more so than others. Louise would only be standing there bright red. Holding her wand, she was tempted to try to use it to attack Naruto, although she knew he'd be able to dodge every single hit, and the last thing she needed was destroying the catacomb they were under and trapping them all inside. Of course though, all of these emotions were rushing through her head all at once. She didn't know how to feel. On the one hand, the fact that Naruto was able to show this type of emotion in a weird way it made her happy, it excited her. She didn't think that he cared like this, but at the same time, why was he being so stubborn? Why didn't he understand that she was doing this for him? She cared. She didn't want Naruto to die for some world that wasn't really his, not when his world really needed him. She didn't want to be that selfish. However, Naruto looked at her seriously. Luis, I will go back to my world, but not until I'm sure that this one is safe. I made a promise, and I never go back on my word. And why is that? Well, you could say it's my Nindo. Your Nindo? Yeah, it's my ninja way. Well, everyone has their own reasons for fighting, their own reasons for why they do what they do, but this is mine. I hate people that lie and go back on their word. They can't keep their promise. I made a promise to you and to myself, and if I couldn't fulfill it, then I wouldn't really be a shinobi anymore, or at least not one that I can be proud of. Naruto held her hand, holding what could be the key to his way back home. We'll focus on this after we're done, alright? Luis would nod, and with assurance, the time to prepare would be at hand. However, the night of, while Naruto was back home inside of the mansion of his territory, the girls would be enjoying the hot springs not too far away. Luis, Henrietta, Siesta, Talbotha, and Tefania. All five girls would be gathered together, all girls sitting in the hot spring. Luis, as she looked at each one of them, realized that they were all different in their own ways. Luis, you could say, was a lemon, to put it lightly. Talbotha was slightly better. You could say she was an orange. It was Tifania, Siesta, and Henrietta that she viewed as true competition. Henrietta, she had a nice framework. If she had to be given a fruit, you could say she was like a cantaloupe. Then, it was Siesta. Siesta, you could say, was very well endowed and blessed. You couldn't quite put her in watermelon category, at least not just yet, although, maybe... Coconut? But Tifania? Oh, the half-elf girl? She was definitely watermelon-chan, that was for sure. And it didn't take long for all the other girls to, well, break the awkward silence. Um, so, how's the weather? Siesta would bring up. It's nice, Luis would say. Mm-hmm, fair, Henrietta would chime in. A nice breeze in a hot spring of night, Tifania would chime in. Talita with a blank expression on her face, and being one that was known to speak her mind, would simply say what she was thinking. So, I think I want Naruto. 
Every other girl looked at the stone face of Talbata. The fact that she had said so boldly and without any hesitation. What do you mean? I want him. I want to marry him. I don't care how many people he marries. Just as long as I'm one of them. The other girls couldn't believe Talbata's audacity. I mean on one hand, the fact that she wasn't even going to mind if he had multiple wives was one thing, but the fact that she had been so open and bold about it, oh boy. Of course, every girl wanted to stick their claim for Naruto. It hadn't been lost on everyone, well, except for the knucklehead, blonde haired ninja, that everyone had feelings for him in their own way, shape, and form. Luis, for obvious reasons, Henrietta, who had been sweeped off of her feet, Siesta, who had gotten very close to Naruto in a lot of ways, there was Talbata, who was grateful to him, and Tifania, who was also grateful as well. Every girl wanted to stick their claim for Naruto, and it actually led to a rather heated debate, simply because Luis realized these other girls were not backing down at all. Henrietta was a queen. She had the mindset of a queen, and she was not one that would be denied so easily. Then there was Siesta, who, along with her training with Naruto day by day, was growing in her confidence. She didn't view herself as the lowly maid or the humble girl of the plebeians anymore. She knew she had power and could back it up. And one of these days, if she got that fireball jutsu thingy down, then she'd be able to throw it with the best of them. Tefania, she was probably the most humble of everyone. However, Tefania simply liked the idea of having a long vitality. After speaking with Naruto, she learned that from his world, he came from a clan that had a very long lifespan. Meaning that, all things considered, even if everyone got married to Naruto, she could technically play the waiting game and outlive them all. So in the end, it could be the two of them by themselves. However, even that was a bit dark. Not that she wanted them to die, but I mean, she could take solace in knowing that she would be the last one left standing. Luis was absolutely shocked by all of this. The fact that all of these girls felt like they could just lay claim to Naruto. And looking at the expressions on their faces, they were very serious. Luis stood in the hot spring, throwing her hands in the air and yelling to the sky. You want Naruto. You want Naruto. And apparently you want Naruto. Is there anyone else who wants Naruto that I should know about? Back in Konoha, as the Leaf Shinobi were preparing for war, Hinata would be sitting in her room. When suddenly, she would feel a large sneeze coming in. And then strangely enough, her eyes went cold. A shiver ran down her spine. She looked out into the window. She also saw the full moon of her world. I don't know why, but I feel as though I have competition. Hanabi would then budge into her room. Hey, you had a loud sneeze, sis. You think someone's talking about you somewhere? Not necessarily. Are you okay, Hinata? I'm fine. I just have this feeling. A feeling? What? You feeling cold? Feeling a little sick? No, nothing like that. I just feel as though I've just gained a whole lot of rivals. I don't know why. I think I need to do some training. Back to the Reed world. Luis, after vacating the hot spring with everyone else, would make her way back to the mansion. Everyone had their own rooms that they were staying in, and Luis was making sure that they stayed in their rooms, since they had a tendency to want to sneak into hers and Naruto's while they were sleeping. It wasn't uncommon for Naruto to wake up finding his hands on some treacherous mountains, and sometimes he found his hands on what he called the Great Plains. That little comet got him uh, extra 
spicy zap in the face. However, Naruto was not in his room with Luis. No, Naruto was outside. He was meditating, focusing. He was deep in thought. He had tried to have a conversation with Kurama, but Kurama was not having it. If anything, Naruto should have been grateful that he was even being allowed to borrow some of the fox's power and that he wasn't going to try to take him over. Still though, Naruto had thought that they were making some progress. At the same time, he would call out to Luis. He could sense her presence and he knew that she was watching him. As Luis stepped out of hiding, she would walk over to Naruto as the two sat together overlooking the countryside as the full moon shined down upon them. Luis would ask Naruto what he was doing and Naruto explained that he was meditating, trying to focus himself. Luis was always in awe of Naruto in some way or fashion. It was just the way that he carried himself. Of course to Naruto he thought that he was nothing more but a goofball than anything else. Truthfully while he liked to think that he acted cool, he knew that he was far from it. In Naruto's eyes, he knew the truth. The only reason why people in this world gave him the time of day was because he was different. In this world, a person that was average at best could probably be a big shot. Some low level ninja could come to this world to use ninjutsu and all of a sudden he might be seen as a god. And of course, while Naruto did enjoy the attention, he also was very aware of where he came from. He knew what type of person he was. He knew that before he came to this world he was no big shot and when he left it would be no different. That's why he felt so uncomfortable when people praised him, when they wanted to give him these titles, all of these awards, all of these praise. Not that he didn't earn it, he knew that he did, but at the same time, was he really worthy of this? After all. Because of the way that the power worked in this world, for all he knew, anyone could have been in his position. Absolutely anyone. What made him so special or so deserving? Of course, Luis understood this sentiment. After all, they were connected as master and familiar. She could feel what Naruto felt in a way. Whenever he was anxious, she could sense that emotion. She could sense when he was happy, when he was sad, when he was excited, for reasons she maybe did or didn't like. But even still, if there was one thing that truly bothered her, it was when he looked down on himself. Luis would snap at him, telling him not for even a second to think that way. The Naruto that she had been accustomed to, the one that she had met, was way bigger way larger than life. He actually came from nothing, at least in his own world, and yet he made himself to be someone powerful and worthy. He didn't rest on his laurels, he didn't give up, he didn't shy away from the challenge. While she had so many times thought about quitting, he never allowed her to do so. He was always ready to push forward always ready to test himself. He was the type of man that any girl would be proud of, that any girl would want to admire, that any person in general should aspire to be. The world needed more people like Naruto. Naruto was grateful for this and he thanked her for her kind words. This gave him the reassurance that he needed. Almost out of nowhere, as if it came from a sudden shift, the day of calamity would fall upon the world. From Romilia, messenger birds would be sent to the other kingdoms, as the rumbling from the dark mountains could be felt. The ancient dragon was starting to awaken, and the warriors who would be called on for the battle would make their way. Naruto would need some time to get for his preparations, and this was time that the others were going to have to buy him. Of course, Luis was a bit worried. However, she knew that the others would be backing her up, and so she could be confident. 
Of course, she had suggested that Henrietta and Talbotha stay behind. After all, they were the queens of their respective countries, and the last thing they needed was them getting hurt. However, Henrietta would look back to Louise with a stern look on her face, reminding her that just because they were queens, it didn't mean that they weren't warriors or that they weren't capable. They were trained in combat for a reason, and their skills and magic were just as powerful as anyone else's, even if they didn't use void magic. And for Queen Henrietta, this was true. Not only was she skilled in many arts of royal combat, but she was adept at warrior magic, and Talitha with ice. As such, the girls would all stand their ground. Siesta had done her duty in getting all of the civilians to safety, making sure that they would be safe from any incoming attack, and any close cities were evacuated. The Pope, along with the Royal Army, would stand on guard as the rumblings would start to shake and a multitude of dragons, all who were feral and bloodthirsty, would start to rise as the Black Dragon, the Dragon of Calamity, followed close behind it. The soldiers would all take their stand, attacking the various dragons that came their way as they began flying off in great distance. Battles were taking place, from Gallia to Albathon, all the way to Tristan, even as far back as to maybe even near the academy. Of course, many of the students had evacuated from the Magic Academy, as the Headmaster Osmond was standing on guard to defend the territory at any cost, along with Mr. Colbert. One dragon had even managed to find where a few of the civilians were hidden. However, he was in for a surprise, because from out of nowhere, Siesta would appear behind it, causing a diversion as the dragon set its sights upon her. Many of the civilians, including Siesta's own uncle, was worried that the young girl was going to get herself killed. However, that was far from the case. Naruto was a lot of things, but being an effective teacher for someone like her that was definitely a plus. As the young maid had managed to back away, she pulled from under her gown two kunais. She threw them towards the dragon, as the dragon was preparing to launch a flame. She ran through the hand signs as she yelled, Ninja Art! Shadow Shuriken Clone Jutsu! She couldn't hit a target, but if she had a big one, then, all she had to do was slam it with a bunch of ninja weapons. There would be a large poof of smoke as the kunais would start to multiply until there was a barrage. The dragon would be struck multiple times, even being struck in its eye, causing its vision to be obscured. The dragon would launch a fireball, however, she was ready. While Naruto wasn't skilled in every ninjutsu, he did know a few basics that she could have at her disposal. As she ran through her hand signs once again, she countered with the fire style fireball jutsu. The two fireballs would collide with one another. However, since Siesta wasn't used to full on combat on a regular basis, her chakra reserves weren't all that high. At least in terms of her stamina, that was something she definitely needed to work on. But even still, while the dragon was stunned, she knew she had to go in for another strike. She would take out a single scroll, one that Naruto had given her. She knew that she was going to have to put everything into this attack. As she unsealed the scroll, there would be a large shuriken. As Siesta held it, she focused on her target. As she jumped high into the air, the dragon using its one good eye would shoot out a flame towards the silhouette, only for the silhouette to disappear as it was a substitution. From underneath within the shadow, Siesta would throw the demon wind shuriken, windmill of shadows. As the shuriken went flying, it beheaded the beast, causing it to fall over. Siesta was tired, but still, 
the fact that she had been able to be of some use and to protect the civilians, that was something she could be proud of. In the meantime, on the main battlefront, Julio would be leading a battalion, with Henrietta and Tabitha fighting from a distance. Henrietta would shoot off massive charges of water that Tabitha would freeze over and turn into ice, giving them a long-range combo attack, while Tiffania and Luis would use their void magic to create a barrier to try to contain the dragons and keep them in place. The Pope watched on, knowing that the tie of the battle would only change when Naruto arrived. Naruto in the meantime was gathering sage energy. As he did so, he would speak with Kurama, asking if he would cooperate. The fox said nothing. Naruto in the meantime knew that he was going to have to try to go in with this on his own. With Durf by his side, and once his sage mode was charged, Naruto knew that he was ready. Immediately, he would rush towards the battlefield, the girls watching on as Naruto ran forward. Naruto would tell everyone to get out of the way, telling for Luis and for Tefania to hold up the barrier just long enough, Naruto would get to the center of where the dragons were being quelled, as he placed his hand on the ground, as he yelled, Sage art, wood style, deep forest emergence, binding. Immediately, a forest would come into bloom as trees would grow high and tall, their roots stretching far and wide. As their limbs would stretch out high into the sky above them, wrapping and binding all of the smaller dragons and holding them in place, allowing for the warriors to strike them down. As Naruto had finished the capture, the ground shook once more, as the great black dragon would emerge. All of the other warriors would be told to retreat by Naruto, as he would stay and face it on. The skin of the dragon was dense, not something that could easily be cut. However, Naruto had ways of working it down. As he looked up towards the beast, he would get its attention. Using a shadow clone, the clone would be used to distract the dragon, as Naruto would use the summoning jutsu, summoning Gamakichi. Gamakichi had brought along his blade, as Naruto rode atop the back of the toad. He had already prepared a strategy for what to do when this time came, as Gamakichi leaped into the air, and Naruto following close behind, he would begin to gather as much wind as he could. Thankfully, with the mark of my Zuntonorum, he could now command the elements naturally, without the need for ninjutsu, at least not unless he needed it. In doing so, Gamakichi would store up a massive water release jutsu, the Great Toad Water Bullet, as Naruto would bring wind wind in his right hand and he charged up lightning with his left. Once the dragon had managed to defeat the clone, it turned around and set its sights on Naruto. <laughs> Seems like I kept you waiting long enough. Let's go Kamakichi! Combination technique! Gale Storm! Kamakichi would unleash the massive wire bullet as Naruto amplified it with the wind and with the lightning. The three attacks swirled and charged into one, as it took head on the mighty dragon's breath. As the two attacks would collide with one another, Naruto would overwhelm the beast, managing to stun it. As Gamakichi leapt forward with its sword on its back, it would slice away at the dragon, managing to cut the back of the dragon. Wow, that thing's pretty tough, Naruto. It's still standing after a slice of my blade. That's fine. Let's go back and strike him again. Gamakichi would jump forward, slicing the back of the dragon once more, until now there was an X, a target. Even if they hadn't been able to kill it, 
they had been able to cut through its dense skin. That was the reason for the wire jutsu to soften them up and for the lightning to be conducted by the water and the wind to amplify it. Naruto turned back to the others. Everyone, aim for the X on its back. We've weakened it enough to expose some of its inner skin. I don't know how much it's going to take, but if we keep attacking at that spot, it should go down. Everyone would agree with Naruto, unleashing their most powerful of attacks. For Henrietta, she used the surging wave, combined with Talbada using the piercing ice, causing a spiral of water frozen over by the ice magic to attack at that very spot. Luis and Tefania would also unleash a massive void explosion injuring the dragon once more, causing it to fall down to the ground. Naruto would then begin to glow as he felt the vestige of KCM-1 shine upon him. Everyone was now holding back down the dragon that had been managed to be brought down. However, the dragon was not one to give up easily as it began to spew massive rains of fire it torched many of the armies and many soldiers fell, many of whom would not be able to escape. Everyone knew that they would have to retreat and find shelter. Luis and Tefania did what they could, trying to create a barrier to block away the stray fire of the dragon. They yelled out to Naruto to finish it. The dragon, however, in its desperation, would begin to spew out a surging heat. It was so powerful, it even pushed back Naruto. Gamakichi would even have to retreat back away as he felt himself drying up from the dragon's breath, reverse summoning himself back to Mount Miyaboku. Naruto knew that he had to finish the fight here and now. As he had finally entered into KCM-1, he charged with the power of the Nine Tails as he raised his hand into the air. His arm would form the Rasengan, and around it spiraled a great force of wind. The wind Rasen Shuriken. The Rasengan would then begin to grow, until eventually it became larger. Eventually, it was one large Shuriken, one that couldn't be evaded so easily. Naruto would go spiraling back down with the back of the dragon as his target. He pushed the giant Rasengan in to the X. The cutting winds of magic slicing through the dragon's open wound like a blade as the Rasengan would do the devastating blow, destroying the dragon once and for all. In the midst of the explosion, as everyone was sent back by the great winds and the howling of the dragon could be heard echoing out for miles. Eventually the dust would settle. The darkened skies would start to shine the blue. And as the crowds and the soldiers looked on, they could see that the dragon had been defeated. However, Luis would begin running immediately among the wreckage and the carnage, she could see that Naruto lied. She would move over to his side, helping him up. Everyone was worried for his safety. However, Naruto would slowly open his eyes once again. He hadn't really been accustomed to using KCM-1 for all that long, and maybe he had put a bit too much into that final attack. But even still, the victory had been theirs, and the calamity had been abated. People would begin to sing and cheer. The darkness had been done away with. Their salvation, Naruto Uzumaki, Knight of Tristan, had been their hero. Naruto would take some time to recover. There was still much that would have to be done. After all, there were those who still sadly lost their lives. 
and a service would be held for them. In the meantime, Luis and Tifania would go over their plan. Once Naruto was healthy, they would make the portal and would allow him to go back to his world. But there was also something else that had to be discussed. As Naruto had spent his time recovering, there were those that came to visit him. His good friend, Gushe from the Academy. Gushe had stopped to visit Naruto because there was one thing he had wanted to learn more of. That Shadow Clone technique. It could come in handy if he could learn it. However, Naruto would explain that what he used to create Shadow Clones wasn't something that Gushe would be able to copy. However, Gushe explained that, after all, in doing some of his own investigation, their power sets wasn't all that different. Maybe there was a magic version of Shadow Clones. If he could figure it out, then maybe he could. But then Naruto warned him. If his girlfriend were to learn of what he were up to, then things might not go in his favor. Gushe would feel a cold shiver going down his spine as he thought about what exactly would happen if Montemaris were to learn of his rather indulgence. She would not be too keen on that, but still it was a nice technique to learn. Naruto, it didn't take him long to recover at all. And still though, he knew that before long he would have to leave this world. But at the same time, he knew that he wanted to return. Eventually, the day would come as Naruto found himself leaving his what had now become his home. With a small bag on his back with the scrolls that he had gained from this world, along with his sword. Naruto was preparing to set off. However, much to his surprise, he wasn't going to be going alone. No, there were others that were with him. There was Luis, Tefania, Henrietta, Talbotha, Mr. Colbert, Gushe as well. Even Kershe was coming along. Naruto asked what everyone was doing here. And they all exclaimed that they couldn't allow Naruto to go back to his world unaccompanied. Naruto explained that where he was going was going to be serious, and that this wasn't a game. However, they all remarked that they didn't view it as such. Even Siesta came barreling out of the house with her bag packed and ready to go. She wanted to meet this Sasuke Uchiha, learn more about her heritage. Naruto knew that he was outnumbered and he wasn't going to be able to get away so easily. Even still, he asked how they were going to all get there exactly, as Tifania and Luis would raise their hands. Using the incantation, a portal would begin to open. Immediately, Naruto could sense a familiar presence. It was his home. He was actually going to be able to get back. Of course, for Naruto, he was a bit nervous, but at the same time, he knew that this was what he wanted. Everyone followed behind Naruto as they all came surging through. And immediately, they all found themselves falling to the ground. Naruto would see that Konoha was now under him. He had done it. They had done it. They had made their way back. But more importantly, they were all falling to the ground. Naruto would immediately turn on into KCM-1, creating multiple arms and grabbing everyone that was falling behind him as they all landed safely in the middle of Kona. It was in the dead of night, and as Naruto and everyone crashed, falling into different areas, there was one shinobi who was walking around on guard. A certain young man who had wished he could have gone to the war, but he was left back in the village. As he did so, there was something that fell upon him. Hey, what's going on? Hey, we're under attack. Hey, hey. Well, what's this? They feel like they feel as soft as my baby blanket. <laughs> 
It was Konohamaru. Konohamaru found his face being smothered. As he looked up, he saw a girl. And she was rather taken aback by the young boy's boldness. My, my. Naruto, you certainly do have rather forward people in your world. Um, I, um, I, 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 hm, my name's Kershe. Nice to meet you. What's your name, young one? Oh, me, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, you can, um, you, I'm Kona, I'm, 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 I'm Konohamaru. Wait, N Naruto? Hey, Konohamaru, what's up? Naruto, you're back! Konohamaru immediately jumped onto Naruto, giving him a deep hug. Everyone was happy to see that Naruto had been able to reunite with one of his friends. Konohamaru, what's going on? Where is everyone? Everyone's left for the war. You... Wait, what are you doing here? We all thought you were gone. There's no time for that, Konohamaru. Can you point me to where the war is? Uh... Yeah, I can. You just gotta follow me. Oh, alright. Naruto didn't know that Konohamaru wasn't allowed to go to the war. Konohamaru saw this as his chance. A chance for him to do some good. To really get on the front lines. And to impress that girl. But in all seriousness though, they did need to get to the battlefront of the war as quickly as possible. Naruto would begin running on ahead, with Konohamaru leading the way. Everyone else would be following close behind. Knowing that they might be a bit slow, Naruto would turn on his KCM-1. Grabbing everyone and holding them up, he told them all to make sure that they were able to withstand some high speeds. Naruto with his arms and holding his close friends behind him, would follow behind Konohamaru as he led the way, as they set their sights on the battlefield of the Fourth Great Ninja War. What was going on in the war, might you ask? Where were they in the stages of battle? Well, on one battlefield, Kakashi Hatake, Nagato Uzumaki, Konan, and Might Guy found themselves locked in battle against the masked man who claimed to be Madara Uchiha, who along with his commanding forces of seven tailed beasts, along with his ally Kisame Hoshigaki, as well as other Edo Tensai Shinobi. As the war was entering into what might be considered its final stages, there was also another battle, one that you might find rather familiar about to take place. As the fourth company had gathered, they were setting themselves for battle against none other than Madara Uchiha. This concludes Naruto Tale of Two Sages. What if Naruto was Luis's familiar? Part 13. As always, if you enjoyed today's video and everything else that we have to offer, then please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share, and hit that bell for post notifications so you can stay up to date on everything that is Power Core Productions and Podcastings that has to come out now and in the future. Stay tuned later on this afternoon as we will be doing the Chainsaw Man Anime Review Episode 5. And stay tuned for tomorrow's video as we start our first of three new stories here on the channel that's going to be closing out our story edition for 2022. The first of our three new stories coming from our Anime X DC crossover event in What If Naruto Was the Green Lantern? Naruto Brightest Day, Season 1, Part 1. But anyway, that's going to do it for the end of today's video. I'm Javon Harrington with Power Core Productions and Podcastings. Signing off, and I'll see you next time.